Hey anyway guys, my name is Ben. This is Andrew. And uh, today we'll be doing a little setup before Volume 3. And uh, we are going to be knocking out four of the World of Remnants. We'll be doing Aura, um, the Vital Festival Tournament, yep. Huntsman, and the Cross Continental Transmit System. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be pretty much... These are informationals. They're sprinkled it out, sprinkled throughout, um, and none are. They're just like I said. These are just these videos are just informationals about the world. Okay. So, um, and I'm not I'm not showing you anything that's like plot spoiling. Yeah. Like so, nothing's like hey, like you know, this person did this thing in this place, yeah, and yeah. then like it. There's no after effects. So, um. So anyway, so. Excuse me. We're going to be starting with Aura, right? You yeah. obviously know what Aura go in. What do you know about Aura so far? It's Aura. <laughs> give me a little, give me a little more than no, that. Cool. Come on. No, the Aura <laughs> is, is like something that's within every, every life form except for Grim. Yes. And Specifically uh, things with a soul. Soul, yes. Things with souls. So, like, obviously, I'm not going to <laughs> um, uh, so anything with a soul has aura aura is kind of like this like shield I guess you could say also like a power of some sort that every life form has it can you they can people can use it to shield themselves to attack um yeah okay. i guess well let's uh let's find out if you're true so. definition Huntsmen are widely regarded as the world's greatest warriors. Death While is a huntsman. In a wide variety of weaponry and hand-to-hand -hand combat, these champions are also masters of a much greater power, Aura. Aura is a manifestation of the soul, a life force that runs through every living creature on the planet. Whether they are a meager shopkeep or a renowned knight. However, what sets true warriors apart from all others is their ability to amplify and control their aura. Aura is primarily used as a defensive mechanism, passively coating the wielder in a protective force field. It can protect a combatant from what would normally be a fatal blow. It does not, however, make the user invincible. As they receive more and more damage, their aura reserve will deplete. If this happens, all the fighter will be left with is his resolve. Fortunately, when a fight turns gruesome, a warrior can also rely on their aura in a different manner. Semblance is a term used to describe the projection of aura into a more tangible form. For some, this could be the ability to control objects with telekinesis. For others, it could mean superhuman strength. The power associated with a wielder's semblance is completely unique. With enough training and focus, a user's aura can turn them into something much more than just a man. Huh. It was Aura. So I did not know that Aura and Semblance were actually the same thing, different form. I didn't know that. Yeah, so your Semblance is... You're channeling um, Aura into a specific... The offensive version. Huh. Well, I guess maybe not offensive, but it's the... Um, so you have defense, and then you have other. So, other, when, <laughs> other so for instance, defense. when... Yeah. Ren, Ren. Oh, Ren. Is that Wait. his name, Ren? Okay. When he uh, when he killed that snake using aura, that was still defense technically. He blocked the strike, and when he blocked it, it made the snake's head blow up. No, that was just a, a with his aura. No, that was just an attack. You can't attack with aura. Aura right. is pretty. You've seen. You played Halo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen Halo. Yeah, so the Halo, it's the literally your shield. Okay. Right. But you can use some of your shield to, you know, throw a fireball if that's your power. Okay. Right? Or to go invisible if that's your power. Or to fly if that's your power, you know? Gotcha. So whatever your power is. So it's like, 
if you have a hundred percent shield, you can use you know some of it to fly away. Yep. But if your aura breaks, um, which it'll literally show, it'll be a physical. It'll show it to everyone. Like yeah, it'll yeah. be like a like an energy kind of coating. It'll shatter. Yeah, I got you. Um, it'll. Um, you can't use someone because okay. you're out of you're out of aura. It's yeah, your it's you. your it's your energy source, and if you run out of your energy source, you can't power. So, um, this one is called the Vital Festival Tournament. Tournament, 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 tournament. <laughs> right? So, this is what um pretty much across the wood. Yeah, this okay. is like one of my favorite things. So, okay. It all began, as most things do, with war. The kingdoms of the world had been locked in a violent struggle for years, but eventually the Great War of Remnant came to an end on the small island of Vital. It was here that humanity's leaders chose peace over bloodshed and constructed the future of modern society, establishing new laws, new academies, and new traditions. The Vital Festival was created to serve as a celebration of peace between the kingdoms. Every two years, a kingdom would be chosen to open its doors to the world, allowing citizens from every corner of Remnant to meet and indulge in one another's cultures. The pinnacle of this event was the Vital Festival Tournament. After the newly formed Huntsman Academies proved to be a success, the Vital Festival Tournament was designed to test the strengths of the Kingdom's warriors in a safe and friendly competitive environment, a wonderful method in which to ensure that the world's huntsmen would never settle for mediocrity, but would constantly strive to become the absolute best they could be. As the skills of the huntsmen grew, so did the games. And in time, it was decided that the tournament would need a stage equal in greatness to that of its competitors. Amity Coliseum was the culmination of the Four Kingdoms' efforts, a technological marvel and a shining symbol of harmony, capable of making the journey to all the kingdoms of Remnant. It's true that all of this began with war, but it is peace that has served to shepherd humanity on its ascension to greatness. Respect. What do you think about that? That was pretty cool, actually. Dude, there's been an eyelash stabbing me in the eye this entire time, bro. If anyone's wondering what I've been doing, there's an eyelash. Eyelash. Just killed a man. I'm about to just pull all my eyelashes <laughs> Bro, I don't know which one's stabbing me, bro. What is the point of these things? Okay. So, uh, Vital Festival. There was a... So you were asking about the war earlier, in earlier yeah. volumes. You were asking who was fighting. You were uh, kind of saying, oh, it's this and this and this and this. Well, now you know it was a war between all, all four, four nations. Kingdoms. Yep. Right? So they were having a, a massive war. And then this, this top island up here, or the middle island, I should say, Small little one. They, uh, it's called Vital. Yeah. Right. Which is what the Vital Festival is. Yeah. So everyone gathered there. They were there, and there before they uh, they fought. They were like, you know what? Let's chill. Be cool. Like, let's yeah. stop this. So then they they decided peace. And then they were like, we're gonna make we're gonna do a festival to pretty much celebrate peace and all the stuff. And then um, a tournament for all the students um, have arised. Yep. And now the students from each school compete. Yep. So that's pretty much like why all the other students are kind of gathering at this, uh, at Vale. Okay. Right? I mean, people from all over are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have uh, people from Haven and people from Atlas and Vacuo. They're all coming to Vale for the festival. So it's yep. like the Olympics, pretty much. Yep. So I don't think there's anything else. Oh, just telling you about volume three when it starts. 
Now we have Huntsman. Huntsmen and Huntresses, the best and brightest warriors of Remnant, ranking higher than Kingdom Police and even military in terms of strength and skill. The occupation was established alongside the Huntsman Academies after the Great War, with the hope of creating elite warriors whose sole purpose would be to combat the creatures of Grin. Beacon Academy was founded in Vale, Haven founded in Mistral, Shade founded in Vacuo, and Atlas founded in the now defunct Kingdom of Mantle. These institutions accepted graduates of primary combat schools who showed enough promise and tenacity to not only battle the world's deadliest creatures, but also protect their fellow man. For this reason, trainees are grouped into teams, You're ensuring there. the continual development of communication, empathy, and teamwork traits that are vital to any guardian of peace. As an additional precaution to maintaining peace, the founders of the academies believe that their graduates should be kept separate from Kingdom Allegiance. Once finished with their training, huntsmen and huntresses are free to choose who they work for, as well as what kind of work they will do through the use of mission boards. Allying with a particular kingdom or village is entirely up to the individual. However, Atlas Academy has come under increasing amounts of scrutiny for the indoctrination of military lifestyle upon its students, pressuring them to enlist in the Atlas Military's Special Operatives Unit. Every academy has its own methods of teaching, but the end result is the same. Huntsmen and huntresses ready to make their own paths. Some will stay together as a team, some will move on to work alone but all are expected to serve humanity and never succumb to the darkness. Bridging the Mountain. That's pretty cool. It's like pretty much like kind of stuff we already knew. Depth about like what a huntsman are, how they grow and stuff like that. But now you have even more information that the fact that they're not so those mission boards yeah. that they did their very first training when they went to go choose their mission, yeah. that's what professionals do. So, yeah. And they don't have to stay where they can go wherever they want. So yeah. if they're like, nah, I don't feel like being in Vail today, I'm going to go to Vacuo. They just go over to Vacuo. Yeah. Right? And they're not, they're not bound anywhere. Hence the whole reason you ain't going to be able to travel. Yeah, she can yeah. literally do whatever she wants. And they rank higher than military police. Yeah. Right? Or at least in terms of like, strength yeah, and yeah. ability. Right, but now we have a new aspect too, where it says that Atlas has come under um, scrutiny for pretty much pressuring them to join the military after they graduate. Gotcha. So they become like a like a super military almost, because they can join the military. That's not a problem. They can do that whatever they want. But now there's pressure for them to do that because there's a military lifestyle in the school. Yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. So you can tell because very um, what do you call it? Ironwood. He's very militaristic. Yeah. He runs a kingdom, or he, I'm sorry, he runs a, a school, Atlas Academy, yeah. and the military. Yeah. So he's literally running both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he's taking people from his academy and bringing them into his military, which there. is smart, it's not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. But it's not what everyone does has that, agreed upon. Doesn't leave them to their open thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah which, yeah. I mean, they don't have to, but there's just so much pressure for them to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I see what you're saying. Anyway, uh, these ones are, this one, I guess we'll figure it out in a second. It'll tell us. I believe this one's the cross-continental transit. So more about the towers. Throughout the years, the world of Remnant has seen hundreds of technological advances that have changed society. The most influential of all of them being the cross-continental transmit system. Prior to the invention of the CCTS, long-range communication was extremely limited. The discovery and development of radio technology allowed for communication within the boundaries of most kingdoms. But communication with other parts of the world was restricted to the physical delivery of messages. With every alternative form of communication that was proposed, 
there seemed to be the perfect obstacle. The destructive nature of the creatures of Grimm severely limited the reliability of ground-based technologies. The concept of relay satellites orbiting around the planet was promising. Unfortunately, modern man has yet to make the technological advancements required to achieve spaceflight, as all known dust types lose their power as they begin to leave Remnant's atmosphere. Eventually, it was the people of Atlas, the world's leader in science and technology, that developed the cross-continental transmit system. It was revolutionary. Like radio, signals were sent and received wirelessly, though the content of these transmissions were not nearly as limited. Audio, video, images, and text were all capable of transmission, and eventually an entire online web of information was at mankind's fingertips. Currently, the system is supported by four primary relay towers, each located within a safeguarded area of the kingdoms. These towers allow for wireless communication within a kingdom through the use of devices such as scrolls. Signals become less reliable the farther a user travels from the CCT tower. And although smaller support towers do exist outside of kingdoms, they are constantly at risk of destruction by the creatures of Grimm. Shortcomings aside, for the first time in history, digital transmissions between kingdoms were possible through the use of slightly more advanced devices, typically found in homes and CCT centers. The cross-continental transmit system has and will continue to advance the progression of mankind. However, if one of the four towers is taken offline, the entire network fails with it. A slight inconvenience during routine maintenance, but, to be honest, I find the limitation somewhat poetic. No one voice is louder than the others, and no voice may be silenced without the rest. If the people of Remnant are to speak, then they shall do so together. Or not at all. So, with that one, we get to learn about... Um, we get to learn about the cross-continental cross transmit system, or the CCTS. Yep. All right, so it's pretty much Wi-Fi, <laughs> internet. Yep. They created an internet. And it's a, he said at the end, correct me if I'm wrong, right, if one goes down, they all go down? Yeah, they all four have to be operational. So if, um, like, while they're doing maintenance... So when, when they take one down for like maintenance, um, no one. So then they uh they go like, oh then everyone's fine. Is so, that what Miss doing? But uh yeah so that that was uh that was the pretty much setup. There's another one I'll show you later, um but I cannot show you now. Um, uh -huh. so we'll we'll get we'll get there when we get there. I'll I'll slap that as a bonus in uh in the video it's related to. Gotcha. Breaking his back trying to scratch oh, I see that. All right, um we're gonna head out. We're going to be doing volume three, the very my personal favorite volume. And uh we're gonna get on to it. So follow our Twitches, subscribe to YouTube, assist me. I'm like right there at hundred. Please. I beg no, I don't beg. Okay.